Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, CM400 Cafe Racer project. Today we're gonna do a little bit of engine stuff. So as you've seen, the engine came in a bunch of different parts. The whole reason for that was to get it all sandblasted and cleaned up um, so that it could be painted a nice, lovely black, I guess. I didn't do the sandblasting. Ordered the gasket set, ordered new rings for the pistons, have started sort of checking things out. Pistons looked okay otherwise. The cylinders looked fine, uh, the valves looked okay. Everything, everything was kind of peachy keen. Was sort of putting it back together and I noticed that there was a little bit of uh, residue of whatever they did the media blasting with. I'm not, I'm not sure um, what was used. And uh, I, I have a fear that some of it might have gotten into the crankcase. I don't think it was done too cleanly. As you can see, I've gotten all the old gasket material taken away and was sort of in the middle of starting to get things together and then just kind of noticed there's just little, little, I don't know, it, I don't know if it's metal flaking from previously or if it's sandblasting material that got in but it's sort of if you can't really see it here and it's hard to explain but if you look in at the front wall in here you, you sort of see some uh stuff i just poked the screwdriver in and and sort of scraped the front of the inside of the case and that's a perfect example of what I see in there. It's not metal, it's got some crystal qualities to it, so it must be uh, whatever media they were blasting with. You know, there's the two worlds of like, slap it back together and see whatever happens. Uh, is it worth it? it the, other, the other side is could take it fully apart, make sure everything is clean, or use the extra engine that I picked up a few weeks ago. Now, it's a... It's probably, I, I think it's out, like out of a Nighthawk or something, like an early 80s Nighthawk. It's a 450. Um, it's complete and uh, running. It can run. It has run. I didn't go a lot into it. It was, it was a cheap engine. It was only, I don't know, like 150 bucks or something. And I didn't actually, at the time, I wasn't mainly buying it for the engine. I was actually buying it for these cutoff headers. I think this was used in like a, a go-kart or something and hopefully not abused too much but even if it was uh, I'll be able to I'll be able to start it and run it and do compression tests and listen for any knocking and and sort of and sort of give it an immediate evaluation so that was the first reason I bought that was for those the second reason was this engine mount the front engine mount this is not with my engine. I have the triangle guys that go up here. I've got the piece on the back. I've got all the bolts for everything else. This engine mount, which was actually the first thing I saw in the picture of the engine, was what I actually wanted. There's this weird bar here uh, welded on the bottom, but it's uh, it doesn't impede with the mount at all. So, all in all, not bad. So I think what I'm gonna do is just to help me get along with the whole uh, mock-up of the bike and getting the electronics in and stuff is I'm gonna put that engine in. It's complete, it's as is, it has its own carbs, uh, and it even came with its own wiring harness, which I may use the original, I may use this one. But I'm gonna put it in just to help me get things going in place without having to pause to completely look at that motor. I'd rather move on the bike and then have the motor be a separate project later that I can really take my time and 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 do right um that's what i think i'm going to start with today we're going to uh slap uh slap l motor in l bike again. If anybody was wondering how I did that, I uh, slid it into place, 
two by four on the front, squeezed it up, two by four on the back, built it up until I had two and two. Um, then I basically just swung up the front, got one bolt in the top on the front, and then I was able to get a jack underneath and jack up the back until the bolt holes lined up. It's been a while since I've done one of these motors, so I'm, uh, I'm happy it's in and I didn't sweat too much. Didn't even take the tank off. Now the engine is in, not that I needed it to be in before this, but uh, I can now see exactly what routes I want to take with my wiring, if anything is going to change. Uh, obviously, I've got to build the tray, uh, which is what I'm going to do next. But because the bike came in pieces, you know, uh, I don't know exactly the route for anything. So I'm sort of uh, figuring it out as I go. Let's put the seat up, let's have a look. <laughs> That's really cool. Excellent. I'd love to. I'd love to give the, the bike a start. Yeah. The other thing about getting all the wiring in is uh, I'd love to just turn it over and and see what this uh, sounds like. Yeah. So if you're digging this, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, please tune in again. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.